you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. Well, we've completed the first leg of the campaign trail and we're headed on to the second. Let's take a little recap. That's right, Mitch. We started in Eureka with Eureka County's Lincoln Day Dinner. Then we went to Yarrington for Lyon County. Then we went to Elko for Elko County. We came back to Battle Mountain for Lander County, Winnemucca for Humboldt County, and ended up in Lovelock for the Pershing County Lincoln Day Dinner. We're starting the second leg of the Lincoln Day Circuit. Now, last night we were in Washoe County, the Reno Lincoln Day Dinner. This morning, we're gonna be right here in Story County in Virginia City. This evening, Carson City, Carson City County. And we will end up tomorrow evening then in Douglas County at uh, the Carson Valley Inn in, in Gardnerville. From there, we will finish the tour in Fallon in Churchill County. For those who have not made it out to a Lincoln Day dinner in the past, tell them a little bit about why they should be attending these events. We know the statistic that only 25% of the people who are eligible to vote actually register to vote. And only 25% of those who are registered to vote actually vote. That means that there has to be a way that we can gather people in, get their interest, give them the information so that they can make that informed vote. So it isn't just a small percentage of the people deciding who is governing in this country and in our cities and in our states. And so these Lincoln Day dinners really gather the faithful, the ones that say, I, I really understand I need to be an informed voter. I need to know who the candidates are. I need to talk to them personally. And that's what the Lincoln Day dinner does. It's called the Lincoln Day Dinner because Abraham Lincoln was the very first Republican president during the Civil War. We honor him and his memory. We also honor President Reagan. So it's a time for people to get together and honor the principles that we hold dear as conservatives, which is lower taxes, less government regulation, those things that we put into our party platform every year. And as you know, I run on that party platform because that's really who I am as a lower taxes, less government regulation person. And you will meet those kinds of candidates at these Lincoln Day dinners. Well, let's continue our journey. Let's do that. Twenty-five years later, I served in your legislature and I was able to get a law passed that said you can homeschool your children in Nevada without any other caveats, just straight up, you can homeschool your children. That's what choice in education really is about, is giving us the freedom to make those kinds of choices. Again, I'm Sharon Engel. I'm running for Congressional District 2. I want your vote. You can find out more about me at SharonEngel.com. We have a closed primary state. If you're not registered Republican, you can't vote in the primary. And um, incidentally, that's where this race is because we live in uh, this congressional district was reapportioned so that it would be a very heavily Republican district. And because of that, only Republicans have won this district. Um, and so that means that the very first election in the process is the most important one. That's where we choose the best Republican and that person generally wins the office. In fact, it has never happened that a Democrat has won this office or an independent. So 
That's why this primary is so important. I started in politics as kind of an accidental politician. Uh, my son, Joy's brother, failed kindergarten and he was demoralized by the experience. So I thought, well, I'll just take him home as an educator. I'll homeschool him. And that's when an, a judge told me from the bench that uh, even though the law said we could homeschool in Nevada, a law should say you can't homeschool unless you live more than 50 miles away from the, the school. So he actually legislated from the bench. That angered me, first of all, that because he had interrupted what I needed to do for my child, but even more basically, he had violated the law by, made, by deciding that he would just make up the law. And because of the case law that is in place because of that, that became the law of Nevada. And now everyone who wanted to homeschool had to be under his decision that you had to live 50 miles or more away from the nearest school. You are running for Congress, um, District 2, uh, against um, a, another Republican candidate, uh, the, the incumbent Mark Amaday. What are the differences between you and uh, Mark Amaday uh, for this congressional seat? So I'm a lower taxes, less government regulation, um, more individual freedom Republican, and I think that Mark's record will prove that he's voting for taxes. In fact, in uh, 2003, we have a record together. I served in the legislature at the same time. I was on the assembly side. Mark was on the Senate side. On the assembly side, we were in the minority, but the Fearless 15 held through two special sessions against that huge tax increase that was the biggest tax increase in Nevada history. Uh, at the very end, one of our number uh, voted for the tax, so we lost our, our one-third. But on the Senate side, there were only two senators that voted against that big tax increase. Uh, Barbara Sagaski and Sandra Tiffany. Mark Amaday voted for the big tax increase, so we differ on taxes. I think we also differ on public policy, and that's uh, again, uh, on the record, uh, apples to apples, our legislative record, he uh, voted for the rural county representation to go to the south in 2001 during reapportionment. We had an opportunity to expand the legislature by six seats, two in the Senate, four in the Assembly, give all of those to Clark County, and allow the rural counties to keep their representation. I, that was the plan that I favored. I voted against sending our seats south. Mark voted to send them south. So I just feel like we're at opposite ends on a lot of these issues and that people need to look at the record. Even when we get to the federal uh, level and the places that he has cast votes, I fought hard to repeal Obamacare here in this state. He has voted continuously to fund Obamacare. I, I believe that we should uh, secure our borders and make sure that we have uh, immigration law that's workable. Uh, I don't think that amnesty is a an, is should even be on the table. Now, in, in terms of what the congressional district two encompasses, um, land has always been a, at the forefront of any discussion in the rural counties. Um, I know uh, uh, many people in the county would, would like to see more of the state take over. Others don't think the state can. Uh, we're also looking at military uh, proposals for expansion with the uh, Naval Air Station Fallon Range east of Fallon and then also Nellis. So um, how do you feel about uh, the, the control of um, state land? and also if, if it's uh, uh, viable for the military to uh, expand their training areas with uh, over federal land. In, in some cases it is viable. I think that Area 51, uh, we all would say that that's a secure area that's been used for 
for uh, nuclear testing, and so it's not a, a really a viable place for us to think about putting into private ownership. I think that that's a, a, a good a place for the military to be, but it's also a good place for private industry to be. In the case of Yucca Mountain, it's a private installation for uh, a repository, but also for a recycling of the nuclear spent rods. We know that 80% um, or more of those rods is still viable for use, and they do recycle that in in uh, many foreign countries. We should be thinking about that here and making it the industry of Nevada. When we talk about the land issue, we need to also look at the enumerated powers of the Constitution. And I don't see it within the enumerated powers of the Constitution that the federal government has uh, the power over wild horses in our state, for instance, or the minerals in our state, for instance. There are, there are just certain things in that enumerated powers that uh, do not apply to our public lands here in Nevada, and so Nevada needs to be a stakeholder in many of these issues, and those are some of the laws, I guess, that are on the books that we need to look at and make sure that they are benefiting Nevada. Uh, gun issues, and um, uh, I don't see it dying down for for a while. But um, how is, is there any anything we can do through education, background checks, or anything like that that? Uh, would, would help mitigate some of this? Do you, uh, what, what do you propose? Well, I'm a Second Amendment person, and I mean we have the right to keep and bear arms. I don't think that a gun is anything more than a tool, and it is the human element that we really need to be looking and focusing on rather than the tool. Uh, I don't see anyone focusing on knives or cars or airplanes, and those have all been tools in mass um, slaughter and massacre. So you, you need to get the focus off the tool and back onto the real root of the problem, which is the human element, as I, as I said. And this needs to then be uh, a compilation, I guess, of, of the stakeholders that really um, especially in the case of school shootings, law enforcement, the schools, and social workers all in this Florida episode had an opportunity to know about this person and yet they were not um, uh, collaborating on it and, and looking for solutions. This, obviously, this person was, uh, had been crying for help for years and years and uh, we don't have uh, a good enough system in place to deal with that human element and I think that's where we should be looking. As far as the victims of these crimes, we need to be proactive. Um, I was in Israel recently and one of the fellows told me he felt safer in Israel than he ever did in back home in Indiana and the reason was because they are aware of the problem, the, the terror that surrounds them are, are people that just aren't right, that are around them. And everyone there uh, understands that they need to be the first line of defense for their own safety. So when we're talking about the first line of defense in a school, we should be allowing those who work in that school to be that first line of defense. Uh, we have concealed carry laws that allow for citizens to, to um, defend themselves and to carry weapons concealed. So uh, does that, do they check those rights at the door of their workplace? I don't believe that's true and I don't think that we should have um, gun-free zones where that invite criminals and I don't think that we should have uh, places that uh, allow crime to go on. Explosion of growth, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Clark County and uh, uh, Reno and now uh, 
with the Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex. Um, do you uh, foresee the government getting involved to help the states with with uh, grants and extra money for training workers and um, uh, assistance through uh, rural development to uh, help people find affordable housing? I believe that all of those things would be better handled at the local level by uh, local officials and also uh, with some state help uh, with those. Sometimes we cross county lines. We've got, we've got some of that going on here with Washoe and Story and, and Lyon County. In, in the north and so I think where it crosses county lines then you have a state interest but the federal government is too far away for this and so they should just give us the freedom to act and also that then gets us back to the very first question which was the land. If we're going to be able to develop the land we have to have a, a way to um, have the land available. So um, the federal government then needs to um, give us the freedom and I don't think that it's a, uh, it's something that they should have power over in the first place. So I lose that, that term, give us the freedom, uh, very loosely because I think we should have had the freedom all along to determine, to determine how our state lands are used. I am Sharon Engel, running for Congressional District 2, and I want your vote. For more information on this guest, or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Very exciting. Today I'm with Sharon Angle, Joy Kincaid. We're in front of the old Sports Authority building for a reason. Your next expo, Nevada Women's Expo, coming up April 6th, April 7th. So excited. Tell me about it. That's right, Mitch. We're really excited to bring some new life to this section of the Fire Creek Crossing Shopping Center. We're right next to Sam's Club. Uh, Starbucks is right over there. There are a lot of shops that people can come and shop at while they're here at the expo. We have a ton of parking, which has always been a problem at our past events. And any other event that you go to in town has a parking problem. So we have eliminated that problem altogether. There is over 40,000 square feet of room inside for our vendors and our shoppers. So you won't be crammed on top of each other, but it's very, um, nice inside with carpeting and with tile walkways. We have dressing rooms for the clothing vendors who are going to come and join us so that the people can come and try on the clothes there and not have to do it in a little pop-up tent like they had to at some of our <laughs> other events. There's really nice bathrooms in there. We have tons of room for food trucks. We want food trucks to come and be able to sell out here in the parking lot and so that people will see the event as they're driving by and our banners are going to be on the front of the building so they'll know that there is definitely something going on here. Sharon, the Nevada Women's Expo's got some history in our community. Tell me a little bit about why you started this, who should come to this, and what vendors you're looking for as well. Thank you for asking those questions, Mitch. Of course, the history is we've been around for 15 years as Nevada Women's Expo. We were at the convention center first, which is just right over there, which makes this location even easier for our past customers to find. We're right here in Fire Creek Crossing, which we think is a great place, not only for customers, but for our vendors. We have a great load in, load out dock. So it's just easy in, easy out for our exhibitors. And that's one of the reasons why we're having it here. This year, the uh, theme is celebrating women. And as always, it's gonna be a shopping extravaganza, but we just wanna be able to celebrate what it means to be a woman and you know to be independent or you know just enjoy the finer things in life, the frilly things of being a girl. So we, we encourage vendors who cater to women, but we also encourage vendors who sell products 
that men might be able to pick up for their significant other. So we encourage men to come in and shop too. Well, that's right. We say we appreciate women in business, but we also appreciate businesses that appreciate women. That's right. So it's all about appreciating women. One thing the community can always count on at the Nevada Women's Expo is the steals and deals that they can get at the Nevada Women's Expo. There are always deep discounts and things that you cannot get any other time except for shopping the Nevada Women's Expo. Well, that's right, because we're going to have exhibitors here that work from home, that do handcrafted, homemade, homegrown things, things that are just not available in a brick and mortar shop. And we'll have those that are in brick and mortar shops also joining us so that they have a, another location where they're able to uh, show their craft, show their uh, wares to uh, the community. So you're right, Joy, they're going to be planning something really exciting just for this expo so that we can get those steals and deals. And we, you can also look on our website, nevadawomensexpo.com, for those that are going to be participating. They'll be advertising some of these steals and deals. We'll have them up on that website as well at nevadawomensexpo.com. The vendors. This is what's really important about the Nevada Women's Expo that separates it from any other event out there is the diversity, but the fact that you don't overpopulate any one segment for vendors. So tell me how that works. You're right, Mitch. Uh, we don't allow more than a, just a few vendors from each category because we don't want to dilute the market and confuse the customer. But we do offer exclusivity at you know a sponsorship price if people would like to be the only one in their category. So you know we just really try to make it so that it's. Um, you know, people can do a little comparison shopping on site. You know, if you tried to do that around town, it would take hours. We allow you to do this one-stop shop in, you know, however long you want to be here and get it all done and over with and eat and have some fun, hang out with your girlfriends. And it's just a really great experience for everyone. The whole family can come. It's a That's family right. event. That's right. I was going to say, bring your children, bring your husband. This is something for everyone. And we try to make it a good family atmosphere so that you're not afraid to bring your family, your children, your husband to this event. But uh, I'm sure that there will be things that even your husband will say, come on, honey, you got to go over here and look at this. Or your child will say, mom, mom, have you seen mm -hmm. this? And we like that diversity about our show. That's right. Diversity is something that's always been very important for us at the Nevada Women's Expo and we invite many different types of businesses to come and join us from financial, banking to uh, insurance salesmen. To well, we have pest control. We've had uh, Mr. Fix-It. You, you need a handyman, he's here. You need uh, a trampoline uh, experience, they're here. Well, you need a massage, they're here. You need a makeover, we've got that. So it's just a lot of different services and products, name some. Right now, the vendors that we have signed up are LuLaRoe, ADT, Arbonne, New Skin, UB Fixed, and several others that you know are coming in as I speak. We have applications coming in the mail every day. So we have room for over 100 vendors and we want to have you know as many as possible from each different type of service and product and even nonprofits we encourage them to come as well um, if you know we'd love to have the um, representatives from the down syndrome network and we're trying to get them here and we're going to have the uh, blood drive van uh, united blood services will be here doing a blood drive so if they're a nonprofit and they want to um, get out into the community and get some volunteer um, exposure, this is the place to do it. Well, speaking of exposure, we're going to, we're expecting between two and 7,000 to attend our event. In the past, that's kind of the range that we've had in over two days. We expect to have that and we really expect to have more here because of the location. We're right here in the middle of Southwest Reno shopping, uh, Meadowood Mall, this small Fire Creek Crossing, the Convention Center, you know, it, just the business community is surrounding us. So that's here, but also because we have great access this time. We've got good parking for those who want to come and visit, but we've also got great access 
for those who want to exhibit with this as well. You mentioned nonprofits, and one of the fundamental beauties of the Nevada Women's Expo is that you give back at the end of this event to a nonprofit. Yes, we do, Mitch. Every every year we do give back to a nonprofit. This year our nonprofit beneficiary is Supportive Hope, and it is a network of data that is um, being put together for those parents and caregivers of people and children with special needs um, so that they can go to our website, a website, supportofhope.com, and find out where they can get services and resources uh, for their loved one who has special needs. As many of you may know, we have baby Ben. He was born with several defects, but he's 16 months old and he's doing very well. But the purpose of Support of Hope is to pull together resources that I had to um, pull together for myself. And it was very um, exhausting and taxing and it, time consuming. So Support of Hope pulls all those things together, puts them in one place on, a, on our website, and you can just click on a diagnosis and it will uh, don't point you in the right direction. So, you know, not only does Nevada Women's Expo celebrate women, but we give back to the community. And this is the way that we're doing it this year. And we just really um, want to make people aware that we are a not-for-profit organization and that we, we do this because we really do care about the public and the um, businesses who serve the public. Mark your calendars, April 6th, April 7th at the Sports Authority in Fire Creek Crossing for the next Nevada Women's Expo. Tickets will go on sale online on March 1st, but vendors, well there's space, you need to get your booths now, limited space for each category, so you don't want to miss out on this event. You can get all that information on NevadaWomensExpo.com. Or they can call us directly at 775-787-6017. That's Sharon Angle. Joy Kincaid, Nevada Women's Expo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you thank for you having much. us. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.